Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Roger Benitez. I'm the CEO of Berinka and the new payment solution called Bloxy. I see that people party pretty hard yesterday for this to see how, <laughs> how full, but let's go ahead and, and continue with the presentation. So today I'm talking about cross-border payments and, and remittances using blockchain technology, mostly in developing countries. So let's go, go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about us. Um, one of our companies, we own an international cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, it's the biggest in Latin America. It has local presence in over 10 co uh, countries in Latin America and expanding. And right now we have presence in over 40 countries globally. Uh, our exchange has over 25 cryptocurrencies listed, over 10 fiat currencies, and over 120 markets uh, trading pairs. Uh, currently, we operate, as I mentioned, in 40 countries, including three continents, Latin America, Europe, and Asia. What uh, we have developed and partnered with is creating a cross-board payments and remittance solution based on blockchain. So um, the targets are bank customers as well as bank customers. We have over 45, we work with over 45 banks globally. Um, and through all these services, we allow to, uh, users to integrate via e-commerce. We have our own BTMs. Um, it's an BTM, an ATM, we call it actually a top-up service, uh, where you're able to top up uh, different services that we offer so through the payment platform. We also have our own prepaid cards that we have directly a been sponsored from a bank, completely different than any other third-party services that are currently in the market. And we have our digital uh, mobile POS system, point of sale system. There's some metrics on the global remittances. Uh, the global um, uh, remittances in 2018 were 529 billion USD. Um, East and Asia uh, and Pacific are 104 billion. Latin America it's 88 billion. And Europe and Central Asia is 59 billion. In Latin America, and of course, in all these metrics, we don't have intra-regional metrics as th that wasn't available by the World Bank. By intra-regional, I mean, for example, in Latin America, we have had a lot of internal immigration, for example, from Venezuela, going to Colombia, going to Peru, going to Argentina, and then involves a lot of uh, inter-regional remittances. That's not reflected here. It's just basically from all across the world to Latin America itself. Uh, the growth rate in our business towards Latin America is the following. The, the growth has been pretty steady. It was 05, 2015, 6%. 2016, 7.5%. 2017, 9%. 2018, 10%. And if we continue on this growth rate, it's probably going to be a 12% or even more due to the internal immigration, as we mentioned, in countries like Venezuela that has uh, 2 million people that immigrated just last year. The current problems with money remittances as we see it right now, uh, by current problems, I mean probably, I'm not going to mention the companies, but the companies that we all use, that we have to take the money out, we have to walk to the, wherever they have a local shop and send the money, it's uh, the cost. It's pretty high cost. For example, these companies, just to give a crazy example, if you send money to, to um, Colombia, you can pay up to 17% on a, on, on, on a transfer. I say 17%, they tell you maybe five, but at the end, on these countries, they're able to pay you just on the local currency, so they use an exchange rate, and the spread ends up being up to 17%. The excessive times. Um, if you do international wire transfers, it might take up to seven business days, uh, if you do it via a normal bank wire. If you do it via a normal, um, a normal exchange house or, or remittance house, well, the time that it takes you to leave your work walk there, take the money out of the ATM, go give it to them, and then vice versa, it also takes some time. And as I previously mentioned, is the exchange rates. Um, they have a fixed exchange rate on countries that are not allowed to receive another separate currency. So here's something really interesting. This is something uh, actually I've been speaking a lot in all the conferences. Uh, I speak a lot with central banks. Um, and when they hear cryptocurrencies, you see them leave, or they see them uh, like put a really, really ugly face to you, right? So um, we did create a pretty nice link. Actually, now you see that, um, for example, Ripple created X Rapid. They're able to work with several banks across the globe. 
uh, Santander is one of them, we have BBA, we have several banks uh, in the SWIFT system integrating blockchain and we see more and more integration of banks into crypto. I uh, mean to blockchain, not crypto. Because they have internal, we have Hyperledger, we have uh, Corda, we have several different things that are getting integrated into, into the system. Um, but what if I tell you that in order for you to use cryptocurrency, you only can get money in and out through a bank. You're actually banking people using crypto. That's something that it's, it, 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 when, when I speak and people start, they kind of like, yes, yeah, actually we, we are fully KYC compliant. So the only uh, way to send money across cross border is you have to be fully KYC compliant and the money comes in and comes out through a bank. That's one of our main uh, channels. So basically we're making business through a bank that we're providing some kind of business that they didn't have before and cryptocurrencies are involved. So blockchain and crypto, they now have a complete link in between the financial entities and Bitcoin and cryptocurrency or, or companies that work with blockchain. Well, here's a simple slide on how, how using, well, it's not simple actually, this used to be a pretty good business back maybe three or four years ago, on how sending remittances using cryptocurrencies. So how did it used to work? And most people that have been into in the crypto space more than two or three years. Um, if you had an exchange locally here, let's say in, in Peru, I'm just gonna Peru as an example, I'm from Peru. Um, you had to buy, bit. you wanted to send money to, let's say Spain, you had to buy, well, register an exchange, get verified in Peru, go ahead, and know a little bit about trading. You have to place a buy order, and you have to fulfill that order. You have to buy Bitcoin. Then you had to uh, create an account on another exchange, uh, let's say here in Europe or in Spain. We had to follow the same process, register, get verified, link your bank account. Then you had to withdraw the money, the Bitcoins to the uh, European exchange. You have to be exposed to volatility in that time. So let's say 2016, 17, where it took around 15 to 20 minutes for, or even more for one Bitcoin to get to another wallet. Um, uh, if you guys been in a, a long time in, in crypto, when Bitfinex went down and price went from 1,000 to 400 bucks and it's in less than five minutes, imagine what would happen there. So you were completely exposed to volatility. Price went down. Basically, if a normal person wanted to send 100 uh, euros, he will get out and got 40 euros. So, well, these are the, bar the main barriers here. Well, the crypto you had to know about cryptocurrencies and trading. It was simple. You had to hedge the market so you didn't lose money while sending the Bitcoin from one exchange to the other. Most exchanges have few fiat pairs. Uh, once again, the risky process and volatility, you took out Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever, and you were completely exposed that while that was going through the blockchain, you would have uh, lost money or gain money, but the, the most problem is if you lose money, right? And a few exchanges work with fiat globally, or they work with a third party channel that takes up to several days to withdraw the money. So this is what uh, we partnered with and we created, uh, Bloxy. This is pretty simple. The user registers as a local bank, one of the 40, over 45 banks I believe we work with. They use their home banking, so they use the tools that they already have and they already know. They go ahead and they top up their Bloxy wallet. They put send money to Spain euros, and this connects through our backends with the other exchanges we partner and we own with. They have zero risk. They, ex they just put, I want to send 1,000 soles and receive 100 euros for the exchange rate, and they're completely, and that gets instantly sent within five minutes. So this creates fast transactions. It completely goes through a secure network. You're gonna see everything reflected through the blockchain instantly with no volatility. The user does not get exposed to risk. It's accessible, you work with your local banks. Uh, in the countries that we operate, we work with at least three to four local banks. So basically, if you are in one of these countries, it's gonna be a bank that we work with. You can do it 100% either on a web app or in, in the mobile app. So it's completely accessible. And once again, we keep on mentioning the new exposure to volatility that because this is a major risk that people get involved into when trying to send money using cryptocurrency. So who can benefit from this? Um, of everything I mentioned. Um, well, at the beginning, I'm a crypto guy, so I'm, uh, even before it's, 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 it's there, it's not there, but um, cryptocurrency startups. 
the most difficult thing for a startup and that that's cryptocurrency or blockchain is to get a bank account. Through our APIs, you'll be able to access over 45 banks globally, over 10 fiat pairs at fees that are really, really low. You'll be able to process payments with credit card, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Diners, Discovery, and so on and so on. Um, and expert communities, let's say somebody here, I believe you're from Venezuela. Okay, well, and Venezuela is still on hold, but uh, let's say you wanna send money to Colombia, to Peru, you're living in Barcelona, you'll be able to send money back, back, back to your country at uh, almost free. The unbanked, with our BTMs, you're an expat, you're still working in your residence or whatever reason, and you, you don't have a bank account, through our BTMs are gonna be deployed uh, they're in pilot testing right now. You'll be able to go to the BTM, you top up your Bloxy wallet with cash, and then you'll be able to not just send money, but you'll be able to make cross-border payments on utilities. That's something that it's, uh, when you send money, let's just say money to your grandma, whatever, your parents or whoever you try to help out, uh, you send an amount and you don't know what they're paying. That's sometimes on some families uh, dispute, right? You didn't pay this, you didn't pay that. Um, if you use our BTMs, let's say I want to pay the phone bill, you can pay the phone bill directly through one of our BTMs. Um, international, small and medium companies. We are not only B2C, but we're all B2B, so you, everyone can benefit from this. Freelancers, that's a really, really, really smart and really huge area. Freelancers, right now everything's global. Um, every time I keep on traveling, going through new offices and new companies, um, I keep on going companies that have more employees that are my company and they have less offices. And, and, and it, starts, it, it starts going smaller and, and, and smaller, people working from home, people working freelance, outsourcing. And the most difficult thing is them getting paid. Uh, so this, this helps them out. E-commerce sites, well, imagine you sell, you sell a t-shirt made in, in Peru and you wanna sell it globally. Um, or either you get some really good funds to open a company across the world they're doing, well, in let's say Argentina, Bolivia, uh, Europe, Spain, uh, and, and Italy, Portugal, and so else. If you integrate um, an e your e-commerce API, you locally be in all these countries that we're, uh, we're in. On these startups, it's the same thing that I mentioned about cryptocurrency startups, I just put the word crypto, so basically any kind of startup, fintech startup will have uh, less of a hassle of integrating all of this into their platform because that's the financial, getting into the financial system, it's, I believe, from the experience I have at least uh, on the past five to six years, that's the hardest task because banks don't wanna open an account, banks wanna close, it's, it's a high risk level and this gets solved from that. It's a small video you can check out. It was supposed to have volume and be a little bit more emotional, but <laughs> it didn't have it. But well, that's the presentation. And anybody has any kind of questions on, on remittances or, or blockchain or payments that you would like to address? Um, well, most people are not on back because they don't, they don't have an identification because they were actually born and they will have a, <laughs> a registry. So um, the unbanked, usually on expert communities are because they don't have local legal papers or residences. Uh, me being an immigrant in several countries, I see that from fellow uh, expats. It's not that they don't have an ID, but it's that they, have an, they, don't, they don't have a local, with their ID, they are not able to open a local bank account. So be more simple, somebody, let's say from Mexico is living in, in Texas, they do have an ID that it's from Mexico, complete legal ID from Mexico, but with that ID, they cannot open a bank account in Mexico. So that's the kind of uh, expats that uh, I'm, I'm kind of mentioning. Okay. 
All right, guys, thank you for your time, and hope you have a good day.